Today is a quick video on the washer bottle pump for the Volvo 240. Now these bottles tend to break a lot. Uh, you see there's lots of cracks all along here, a bigger crack there. It's not unlikely that yours is probably just completely crumbly and demolished. Inside of this bottle is a screen, a filter of just large particles that shouldn't go through the pump. These also tend to look like that. This was my old one and crumbly is a bit of an understatement. Let's call it biodegraded. So today I'm diagnosing why my pump isn't working. Now from the bottom of the bottle is a nipple with one hose on it. And then this hose goes right to the pump, which should be here with this two wire connector, a blue and yellow with a black. The blue and yellow is triggered only when you have the wipers on spray mode. Now going to the wipers, I have them lifted up here so that I can work without scratching the glass, you know, since there's no water coming through. And I open the hood almost all the way. You don't want to go this far because it will hit that wiper, but you can go about 80%. The trick to getting these cleaned is, first of all, use a safety pin, poke them, move them around a little bit, and then the second thing to do is try to get air to blow through them. To do that, you can disconnect from the T. The line going this way is the same hose, follow that there, and all the way to the pump. That's the output of the pump, and so it goes in here and then it splits to left and right. I made the mistake originally thinking that the hose goes like this, and then it splits to left and right, but it's actually, that's the way in, these are the ways out. So both of them do have air blowing through. It's a very small amount, but it's enough, you know? And uh, what else I like to do is spray a little bit of carb cleaner through the hose, which is disconnected here and here. This plastic tee could be very brittle, so just twist the hose to try to break the seal from just the rubber kind of sitting there for a long time, and then pull on it slowly. And you can use the silicone grease when you install them if you do have an issue with them getting stuck, but typically removing them makes them easier for the next, I don't know, couple of years. And from there, uh, you know, make sure that those are open. And you can also unplug the pump and see that it's working by spraying uh, from the outlet side. Same thing applies, just twist it off. Now my pump was getting power. I could hear it and feel it clicking, but it wasn't actually sending fluid out. So the first thing I did was sprayed a little bit of carb cleaner here and here because I know sometimes this old fluid, if it's just sitting there and it evaporates, it can get gunky. And uh, you see the blue residue there. The bottle was pretty dirty on the inside, so I did soap it. You know, because it didn't work this way and I wasn't actually getting anything on the output side, so this is the input, that's the output. It's a slightly different barb. I decided to do something I've never done before and let's pull the pump apart because how complicated can it be? It's made by VDO. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, right? Four of these little screws on the bottom or they are a hex head with 730 seconds is what you're gonna need for them. And when you remove those from down here, the pump comes apart in three pieces. You've got one, two, the bracket, and three, the uh, mechanical portion of it. This is way hot because I was running it and it was just jammed up in here and it was just overheating the motor. I'm glad it didn't fry itself, or at least we can hope it didn't. And the issue lies in this passageway between here and here. It gets gunked up inside and then this is stuck or seized. So I broke it loose. I just wiggled it with my fingers, which are a lot stronger than a small pump can do. And um, once I break that loose, I'm gonna spray a little bit of lubricant in here. It's probably just some oil or um, I don't know what kind of lubricant, something that won't probably get into the lines too much, but it doesn't look like, you know, there's no um, electronics all down here. This is just all mechanical stuff. So I don't think you need to be too particular with your lubricants, maybe a white silicone or something, who knows? Anyway, once you break this loose, spinning it one way, you'll see the water, if there's any coming out of one side, spin it the other way, you'll see the water coming out the other end. Anyway, that's the whole thing, you just clean it. And then the bottom of the pump has this fella. And in there, it's just a little metal bracket that grabs either side of this plastic and spins it in the direction it needs to go. It's super simple. I've never pulled it apart before. And now I'm like, well, why would I ever need to replace this unless it's completely burned out from being seized? Great, so clean it all up, put it back together. And then the bracket mounts to the frame here by, um, well, you see there's two sets of tabs and it's on the left side here. So it just slides in like a little picture hanger on the wall and that's that, very basic system. If you do need to remove the bottle entirely, the easiest thing to do, take out the eight millimeter bolt there and then set this to the side because there is a bigger hose in the bottom and then this one here, and you don't wanna flex the joints on too much, but you don't have to be that careful. The rubber hose has a lot of slop. Move that over to the side, then you can get this bottle up and out of the way 
you'll tilt it kind of back up because well, you'll see there's not, it's just sort of sitting in there and this is what's hold, holding it down and then the big bracket holds it in every other direction i think they're available new who knows and right there is a remnant of my old plastic cap because that was disintegrated too i got this and the replacement screen from the junkyard uh, it's also possible that your bottle's cracked from the bottom in that case there's not much you can do because it will leak out immediately but i'm lucky and it's just a top crack and it's not so big that leaves are going to drop in uh, so for my time being, it is okay to work this way. Okay, I'll put this back together, and I'll check in, and we'll see how she's doing. Oh, and aside on this thing, um, it's also dirt that gets in, as you see all around here. It's that kind of sand, I think, that could get in there and really gum it up um, on the mechanical portion there, as well as the fluid. Um, if you spin it clockwise, that's the direction of the motor. If you spin it counterclockwise, it's the backwards direction, but sometimes whatever you can get to have it come out. Actually, in terms of disassembling the pump, there's not much more that you can really do besides pull the top straight off, and then that exposes, I guess, what you could consider to be a little bearing in there that um, is crimped into the plastic. If you really wanted to get into it, you could probably cut the stuff around that, but most people won't get into that, and um, just pop it straight back on. Keep spinning it both directions. I put a little bit of oil in here and here. I'm going to run it, make sure I don't get oil on my windshield you know, run it with the hostess connected, but I really want this to not feel so crunchy or grindy. Um, and it's getting a little bit better every single time that I sort of oil it and spin it, oil it and spin it. If you want to know the part number, it's VDO. This is um, November of 1989 for the car that's a 1990 model year. And it is 051003 as a part number. Short and sweet, like this video. Key on and spray. Oh, sad. Well, those lines really need a good flush and those nozzles are pretty stuck, but let's see how she does without the uh, lines connected. Maybe maybe the pump's weak. If you disconnect the outlet hose and water is already dripping out of it, um, if you disconnect the outlet hose and water is dripping out of it, a steady stream, that tells you that your pump has got flow through. It may still need to be cleaned, but the issue may lie somewhere else because on mine, I was getting nothing on the outlet of the pump because the pump was what was dirty. Now that everything's back here, I'll see how, how strong it sprays. And I do hear it's a lot louder now that I've put the pump back in cleaned and it's able to spin and flow freely. It's a much louder pump now and it seems to be putting out quite a bit of volume. I don't wanna lose all my fluid, so let's just reconnect that. The next thing for me to do is just continue cleaning those lines. It just seems that they're a lot dirtier than I anticipated. But for the most part, this is done. And worst case scenario, for the front, you can just replace the nozzles for the windshield wiper sprayers. Those can be a little tricky, just because everything presses in from the uh, inside. But I think needle nose pliers, pinching it from either end, will get it to pop out. And when you're dealing with things like the Union, naturally there's going to be debris inside and all the old washer lines, if you haven't used it in a while, will be gummed up like that. So you really gotta just go through it and clean them out, blow them out, do what you gotta do. But it takes a while. So Volvo gave us what I would call service lengths. When you remove the clamp here, it gives you a little bit more, but also I think that functions as uh, allowing a little bit of that to sit here so it sprays and the water's there right away versus it could kind of fall back into the line. You don't want it to go back into the line and then start wiping and smudging the windshield if you get something on there that's pretty gross. If you remove this line here at the hinge, it does give you a little bit more wiggle room to actually get this here so you have better access to the T. It's not hiding under the hood like that. So these service lengths are very useful and thoughtful, if even intentional. Also, don't make the mistake that I did and put your mouth to the lines to try to suck out anything. It's still got an antifreeze compound in there because a lot of these get down to zero or negative 32 Fahrenheit so that it doesn't freeze in the winter and crack your bottle or your lines. So um, it's not good for you. And I still taste that gross thing in my mouth and it's not good. It seems worse, but I gotta move on to other things. This is just so you get the point of what's involved with the system. And until I can get some proper compressed air in there, um, using my hand tools in my mouth, it's not working out, but yeah. If you do uh, find yourself, ooh, that could be interesting. If you find yourself at the car wash and there's compressed air at the end to dry everything, 
pop those lines off and just blow through them. That is, I think, what I'm going to do because this thing, as you can tell, needs a wash. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. It feels like a weird spot to end the video without actually having my wipers working. So why don't I just quickly put those in? Because I went to the junkyard and grabbed this from a 240, which is just new hoses. Well, replacement hoses and a sprayer nozzle. And it looks like it's just one sprayer nozzle. Yeah, it seems like the last six inches of line are just this ribbon of blue from the old stuff. So really, I pulled that one out and sprayed it thoroughly inside and out. Um, you can get a little Q-tip maybe, stick it in there, try to clean it up or a toothpick or something. Just get out all the old residue if you have residue. So that side is completely sprayed out and cleaned out. This one's just gonna get that whole section replaced and one of these replaced.